Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to just be doing a very casual sit down and play with some makeup kind of chatty get ready with me. I knew I needed to film a video today so I could get one up for you guys in a couple of days because we are actually getting ready to travel out of town for a few days for my son's baseball tournament. But as I was sitting down and thinking about what I was going to film, a lot of the video ideas that I had listed out in my journal, I just wasn't really feeling. Some of them take a lot more preparation or a little bit more research and planning. And I just decided, you know what? I kind of just feel like sitting down and just coming up with something, just playing with some makeup with no real purpose other than just having fun. So I hope that you guys are okay with that. I have some fun stuff that we'll be playing with today. I'm going to be dipping into the Zodiac palette from BH Cosmetics. Nice and affordable, something that is not quite as affordable. We're also going to be dipping into the Kevin Aquan Contour Book Volume 2. And then of course a lot of other things in between. So I hope that that sounds interesting to you guys. Those of you that are new to my channel, I want to welcome you. I hope that you will consider subscribing if you enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up. And with that said, let's go ahead and just get into the makeup. So we're going to kick things off with the complexion. I'm going to go into this primer right here. This is the Physicians Formula Spotlight Primer. This primer is probably nearing the end of its life. I've had it for about a year now, and I know I probably should declutter it soon, but there's quite a bit of product left inside of here, and I really do like this primer. It's like a glowy base. It is very, very glowy, though. Probably one of the glowiest primers that I own. I really like to concentrate this just right here on the outer part of my cheekbones, and then also kind of down the center of my forehead, my nose and my chin. It has a weird smell to it. It always has had kind of a strange smell. It actually smells a little bit like the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation, to be honest, which smells like paint to most people, but smells like maple donuts to me for some reason. So for foundation, I grabbed out this little mixture right here. I'm sure you guys have seen these around. These are the Maybelline Original Mountain Poreless Foundation and Dewy and Smooth Foundation. I love mixing these two foundations together. I actually like them both on their own. I have two different shades. I have 118 in the Dewy and Smooth, which is a little bit too light for me. I have 220 in the Matte and Poreless, which is a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to pour a little bit onto the back of my hand, and then I'll kind of mix them together with my finger, and then we'll take them onto the face using a sponge. And I have so much foundation. That's one thing with bottle foundations that is so unfortunate to me, is it's so hard to get the amount that you pour out right. And I really have a hard time when I have too much foundation on the back of my hand, which is usually where I will mix my foundations together. It is so hard for me to then wipe off or throw that foundation away. I mean, I do, but it pains me to do it. Anyone else feel that way when you feel like there's so much product that you're wasting and it just makes you kind of cringe? So I'm actually just going to take that little concoction and dip my sponge directly into it and just go right onto my skin. So I would love to know how many of you have tried out this foundation. So this afternoon I was watching Emily Noel's channel. She had a video that she posted on TikTok recommendations. She basically had just kind of discovered TikTok and been looking at some makeup tutorials and recommendations that she'd seen on there and then basically did a video of the drugstore products that TikTok recommended. And this was one of the foundations that she mentioned and it just got me to thinking, huh, I do love that foundation. I've talked about it in videos before. I feel like for the price, this is such a great drugstore foundation and they're so affordable. I want to say they're under $5, I think, maybe right around $5. But if you guys have a foundation maybe that you bought in the wrong shade, this is a really good option to go find like a lighter shade if the foundation, say that you bought a high-end foundation and the shade was a little bit too dark. Depending on whether you like more matte or more dewy finish, you can pick a lighter foundation in these and use them to mix in to other foundations to get them to work and not break the bank, which I do all the time. So for concealer, I pulled out the Revlon Candid Concealer. These are relatively new to me. I've been testing them out for a couple weeks now and I really, really like these concealers. I have two shades of them, one that's a little bit too light, one that's a little bit too dark because honestly these were two of the four shades they had left at my Walmart. So I picked them both up and figured I could just combine things together, which is kind of, it's, you'll kind of see a theme here today, guys. But hey, I feel like that is real life, right? How many of us get the shade match perfect all the time? I almost never do. Am I the only one? So I'm just going to take those on the back of my hand and depending on what areas I go into I'll kind of combine them differently. So I'm going to start off with just kind of like a 50-50 mix of the two colors and we'll go dot these onto a couple of blemishes that I need to conceal around my nose and then just a few pigmentation marks that I have kind of up here on the sides of my eyes and then on my nose I've got a couple marks as well. Fortunately, because those are so difficult to fade. 
So with this concealer, when I'm putting it on my under eye area, I love using my finger. There's something about the way that your finger just really presses it into the skin and just the warmth of your finger that really makes this concealer become one with your skin, which sounds a little bit odd and cheesy, but it's the perfect mix of like hydrating without being sticky or tacky or overly dewy. It's just, it's a nice concealer. I really feel like if you have more mature skin, a little bit more on the dry side, give this one a try. If you're pretty light-handed and careful with it, it's just super lightweight. It conceals really well, but it does not feel like you're wearing anything on your face or even look like you're wearing product on your face. It's, it's pretty amazing. All right, so now I wanna dip into the Kevin Aquan contour book and show you guys kind of how I like to use this thing. But I do want to say this for those of you that have not heard me talk about this product. I was fortunate enough to find this at TJ Maxx on clearance in an unopened box for $13, which is a steal because if you were to buy this on Beautylish right now, I believe it retails for about $65. That is very expensive. I am quite certain I would never pay that myself for this product, but I have to say you guys, I really have had a hard time putting this down. I don't know if you guys can see the dips in these like cream and this powder highlight. I've really been getting a lot of use out of this. And I have had a couple of questions from you guys on how I like the cream products in here. If I think this is worth the price, which I'm not sure I can really answer that question because I personally feel like even though this might perform better than most of my more affordable products, it still would be out of my budget. So I have a hard time recommending it for people. But if you have it in the budget and you're looking for a good product, this is definitely a good one. So I like to just kind of warm it up on my finger and just take a stripe of it right on the hollow of my cheek and almost slightly up above, like on the upward part of that hollow. I don't know if that makes much sense, but I basically want the color to be there and then blend it upwards. And I try to only go down about to the tail of my eyebrow. And if I'm really feeling fancy, I'll put a little bit on the side of my nose. It's probably better to do this part with a brush, but most of the time I just find if I'm using my finger already, it's just easier to just stick with the finger, you know? I'm really feeling fancy, I'll go under my jaw, but I don't really do that very often. I don't find that I really need to do that. I have a pretty sharp jawline as it is, which was such a good thing when I was younger, but now as I'm getting older, I feel like it's not as good of a thing. I don't know, <laughs> but that's okay. So now I have that cream contour all blended out. I'm just gonna go in with this bronzer brush from BH Cosmetics and dipping into the contour powder in here, the sculpting powder. I'm just gonna start kind of tapping this on top and slightly higher than where I put that cream contour. And I kind of just blend it upwards and back into my hairline. But I'm telling you guys, what I love about this specific palette and these colors is their color. The formulas are lovely as well, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like the shade of these contour shades for being a true contour is absolutely perfectly done. It is cool enough to be a contour without being ashy and that's such a rare and difficult balance to strike. I actually also own the Anastasia contour palette and it is just a little bit too cool toned and ashy for me. I find that when I use it, it just, it doesn't look the best. I feel like it's a palette that would look really good if I was going to be photographed, but this one actually looks good in person, whereas that one I feel like in person just looks a little bit ashy and off. So I'm gonna go now into the cream highlight now, I do really like these cream and powder highlights as well. They are very, very subtle. They are not my favorite in the world. Really what I think this palette stands out for is for the cream and the powder contour colors, but the creams are really nice too. If you are wanting just a very subtly highlighted effect, I mean, you can barely see that, but it does do its job. It gives you just a little bit of a highlight, but I think where the cream really helps out is because the powder highlighter in here is very, very subtle, Having the cream underneath it really helps the powder highlighter to stand out a little bit more. It gives it a little bit more punch. So now we're gonna take the powder highlighter and I'm going to apply that to my cheekbones. I always like to go kind of in a C shape, basically kind of over my eyebrow, so it just graces the very top of my brow bone. But I try to do everything that I can to avoid this area right here because this is where my fine lines and crow's feet are. So I really want that highlight to go kind of around it. And I know that within the next few years, I'm probably going to get to the age where I probably should not be highlighting anymore. But honestly, I'm one of those people that I think I will be highlighting till the day I die. It is like my third favorite makeup step. I just love highlighting. I think it's so pretty and fun. 
Even if it does emphasize my wrinkles, that's okay. Now for blush, I really wanted to pull this thing back out. This is from Flower Beauty. This is their blush in the color Warm Hibiscus. It's a beautiful, somewhat shimmery, pink toned blush with a little bit of a gold kind of flip to it. Just show you guys, I love this blush, especially in the summer and the spring. So I'm just taking that on my Real Techniques blush brush. I'm really lightly gonna just start applying this right to the apples of my cheeks. All right, and that is it for the complexion right now. I do wanna take just a little bit of this concealer. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I love using this as an eyeshadow base. It works really well for me. So I'm just blending that onto my eyelids and then we're gonna set that in place with the tiniest bit of a translucent powder. All right, now we are all set for eyeshadow. And for eyeshadow, I wanna go into the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. I do wanna start off by saying this. I know that I've mentioned, I think in a video or two before, that I have been planning to do kind of a roundup of all the BH palettes that I picked up over the Christmas break. For those of you that don't know, I did pick up the original Zodiac palette. I also picked up the Zodiac Love Signs palette, along with the Desert Oasis palette and the Love in London palette. So I told you guys in January that I did actually film a video where I used all four of the palettes and kind of compiled it into one video where I showed you guys how each of the palettes performed. I never got that video edited and uploaded and I can't really edit it now because that was during my January theme of my full month of nothing new and a lot of the conversation that I had during the video doesn't really make sense because we're not doing that full month of nothing new anymore. Anyways, I didn't get the video edited and I've been intending to re-film that video, but I've just been having a really hard time finding the time to do that because those are the type of videos that take quite a while to film and to edit. So for now, we're just going to go in with the Zodiac palette, but please, if you guys still want to see that, if you want to see the other palettes, please let me know which ones you most want to see. Please be patient with me. I will do my best to get to them as soon as I can. I have this terrible habit and I always have of over-promising and under-delivering. I always think that I can do more than I actually can do or can work faster than I actually can work. But just know for now, I'm not completely giving up on that video idea. I just am putting it on the back burner for now because there's a lot of other videos that I also need to get to. So I hope for today you guys will be content with me just trying out this one. I have tried this out several times and I have to say you guys, this is such a fun palette. This one and the Love Signs palette. I just think the Zodiac palettes, as long as you are someone that's not intimidated or doesn't dislike larger palettes, because this is definitely a larger palette, it's not very efficiently packaged, but it's just a really fun palette to play with and to work with. It's a very inspiring palette to me. So I want to go ahead and just kind of finger swatch a couple of these for you guys. I love these shimmers in here. These are their baked shimmer formula, which is different than the one, the shimmer formula inside the Desert Oasis and the Love in London palette. Those are traditional, very creamy, not creamy, but very opaque foiled shimmers, whereas these ones are a little bit more sheer and lightweight. But for how lightweight they are, they still have a lot of intensity to them. And if you wet these, talk about foiled. They are so stunning. Guys, look at these greens. I feel like these are just the mood I've been in lately, but I do feel like I've done a lot of green toned looks on my channel recently. So I kind of want to do something else. I'm leaning maybe towards like the purple and pink side right here. Honestly, I could just swatch these all day. Look at that pink. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at this color Cancer. I actually am a Cancer. And that is a pretty steely blue. Ooh, how fun. Maybe we'll do like a blue and silver look today. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling this right now. So I think I'm leaning towards that. I kind of want to do this kind of blue and silver right there. So let's first start off by going into this kind of pink tone shade right here, the matte shade. I do want to swatch this matte for you guys as well. These are really nice and creamy mattes. They have really good pigmentation. Sorry, my finger's a little dirty, but they're really lovely. So we're going to take this one and just pop it right up through the crease. So I'm trying to decide what to put in my crease that will kind of go with this color right here. I'm kind of wanting to go into this dark cooler toned purple right here just to add a little bit of depth before I pop that shimmer on. Ooh, that's pretty. And by the way, this is the Wayne Goss number 18 brush. So I'm trying to just lightly almost wing this up a little bit and then pull it over just along that outer corner right there just to add some depth and kind of sharpen that shape just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna dip into this kind of silvery blue right here. It's kind of like a silvery purple blue. So I'm just gonna spray the back of my hand with a little bit of the ColourPop Hyaluronic Setting Spray. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to wet my finger just a little bit. 
And then I'm going to dip that slightly damp finger into this shade right here. Oh, do you guys see that? And then I am going to tap this on the outer half of my lid. And with a clean finger, I'm just going to run that clean finger right over that edge right there, just to kind of blend out that harsh edge. This is a very colorful eye. I was not expecting this eye to be this colorful, but that's okay. We're just playing. We're just having fun. I'm not going anywhere. It is 5.30 in the afternoon. No, it's later than that. It's 7.20. How did that happen? <laughs> okay, so now I'm debating. I originally thought we'd go in with this silver right here, but I'm kind of debating going in with one of these two. Let's have a look at these three. Okay, so we have this one's kind of the silver. This one's kind of a more of like a taupey slightly pink silver and then this one has quite a bit more pink than the others. I feel like any of those would look stunning. Let's go with the silver. Let's go with my original idea. So I again am going to wet the back of my hand a little bit. So I'm just dampening my finger and then dipping into this shade which is the shade Gemini. By the way, the last shade was the shade Cancer and then the one I went into the crease with was Virgo and then the outer corner shade was Taurus. In case you were wondering and you are into astrology, let me know if you guys are one of those signs. That was the right choice. Whoo, that is so pretty. Okay, it's colorful, but so pretty. I kind of, I mean, I like the color. I think that I think the pink is really pretty, but if you are intimidated by color, rather than start out with that pink, I would highly recommend starting out with this really soft, light tan transition shade. That'll give you a much more neutral crease. So if the blues are as intense as you want to go, I would highly recommend starting out with this kind of light tan in the crease rather than the pink. I think the pink is beautiful, but the tan is gonna make it just be a little bit more, I don't wanna say neutral because this is still a very kind of purpley blue eye, but the addition of the pink makes it a little bit more rainbow, if you know what I mean. But since we are just playing, I am just going for the rainbow tonight and I'm kind of loving it. Let me know if you guys have tried these palettes out. I know a lot of you had mentioned that you own these and you love them. So I'm gonna take this tiny little, it's a little tiny kind of smudging brush, and with a little bit of wetness on the back of my hand from that setting spray, I'm just slightly dampening up this brush, and we're gonna dip into this center highlight shade right here. I have tried the highlighters in both of the Zodiac palettes that I have as highlights on me, and they're just a little bit too glittery and dry. I don't really like them as highlights, but they make for beautiful inner corner shades. I'm gonna take just a little bit of that lightness up through this kind of hollow right here. So for my lower lash line, I, uh, I'm really not sure what I wanna do. I'm not sure I wanna put pink on my lower lash line. So because this pink packed a little bit more punch than I was thinking it would, I mean that's, and I think the reason it packed the punch was because I took this pink and then I topped it with the purple, and that's where you're getting this kind of like semi-magenta color that's peeking through, which I think is really pretty, but I'm not sure that I want that color on my lower lash line. I kind of want to keep things softer and more neutral down there. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the darker purple and I'm going to combine that with a little bit of this dark brown right here. I'm going to tap off my brush and ever so lightly I'm just going to apply this to the outer like fourth of my lower lash line, just to add a little bit of definition down there, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way in. I am loving this eye look. It's kind of giving me vibes of the kids pick my makeup eye look. Did you guys see that video? I know I'm biased. I know that every mom thinks their kids are cute, but that was the funnest video I have ever filmed. That is gonna be a video that I'm gonna be so happy to have for the rest of my life. I know, I know. Go ahead and roll your eyes at me and then go watch it because it was so much fun. All right, so I think for this look, ooh, do we wanna do like a liquid liner? I haven't done liquid liner forever. Let's do a liquid liner today. For liquid liner, we are gonna go in with what I think might be the only liquid liner that I even own. I might have others, but I'm pretty sure if I do, they are dried up. I do not use liquid liner very often, which probably will tell you guys that this may not go very well for me, but we're gonna give it a try. This is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster in the color Ultra Black. This is a really nice liquid liner. However, if you have watery eyes, if you need your liner to last, through your watery eye situations, this is not the one for that. I think I wore this outside once, and literally within five minutes, it was completely, completely gone. Granted, there are very few eyeliners that will survive, like me watching a baseball game, because my eyes just water 
so very much. We The area that we live in is often windy. When I'm outside in the sun and the wind, I mean anybody's eyes would water in that situation. Four hours later, you can hardly even see that it's there, but it's there and it does look really pretty. Just took me a very long time, which is why I don't do liquid liner very often. Who really has time for that? All right, so now we are going to go in with some mascara. Today I'm going to take my It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I will add a couple of coats and then we will come back and finish off with the lips. All right, you guys, so here is the finished eye look. I have to say I am loving this eye look. It is definitely a little bit more colorful than I typically go out and about in my day, my everyday life with, but but it is super fun. I really want to do this again with the tan in the crease and just see if it kind of tones things down a little bit, but now I feel like we really need to finish off with my lips. My lips are looking very, very dead. So let's move in to a couple of lip products. So I've talked recently about my love for these new Wet n Wild lipstick. This is the first one that I picked up. This is in the color Mad for Mauve. I'm such a fan of this lipstick. You can see I've been getting a lot of use out of this thing. So here is the Mad for Mauve shade, but I did pick up a few more shades and I wanted to swatch them for you guys and then we'll pick one to try out. So I got three more shades. First off, this color right here, which this one has kind of become my new love. It's in the color Close Off, which I'm not wild about that name, but you know. What can you do? They're actually very similar to each other. This one just has a touch more pink. This one still is pink. It's not quite as peach as I kind of wish that it was, but it has a little bit more of a neutral undertone than the kind of mauvey pink that this one has. Then I got this one, which is quite bright, and I'm not sure I'm gonna get a lot of use out of. It's one of those shades that you kind of get it and you think, well, maybe it'll be a little bit sheer and then you realize you probably shouldn't have gone with it in the first place. This is the color Pinky Ring. It is pretty, it's just, it's quite pink. It's very kind of Barbie pink, which would go with my eye look today, but would also be way too much with my eye look, if you know what I mean. And then the last one that I picked up is this one, which is the color Rosé and Stay. This is a kind of a mauve pink that's just a little bit more deep. It actually reminds me of the mauve right here, but it has a little bit more of like a purpley pink tone to it than a rose color. But I want to start off by going in with this lip liner. This I just picked up from Milani. I went to replace my Milani 03 Nude Lip Liner and they were out of that color. But I got this one. This is in the color 06 Spice. I, let me, I already wiped off those swatches, but let me go ahead and swatch this one for you guys. You can see it's a little bit deeper. It's also a little bit more brown. I hope this still goes with this look. We are going to kind of smudge this liner out. And by we, I always mean I. We, like you're going to help me smudge out my lip liner. So I'm just going to apply this. And I always like to take a clean finger and kind of run it along the edge just to get rid of that harsh line. Okay, that's definitely a little bit more brown toned than I feel like goes with this eye look. I really hope that this pink color kind of brings it back for us. I'm actually kind of thinking I might want to combine these two shades. Let me start off by putting on the color Close Off for you guys so you can kind of just see what it looks like on my lips. So pretty, mm, so pretty. It doesn't go with this eye look though. We really need, I really need something more pink. Let me try and add just a little bit of the bright pink and just see if we can maybe shift this color a little bit to a more kind of cool tone pink without being over the top. I still feel like that's a little bit too brown, but I'm just going to really lightly kind of dab this on. Okay, so that looks a little bit better, and now I know what I think I want to do. We are going to go in with this right here. This is from Fenty Beauty. This is their lip gloss in the color Confetti. I feel like that lip really nailed it. It's definitely, it's a very pink lip. I don't usually go this pink on my lips. I mean, it's not like bold, but I normally like to lean a little bit more peachy with my lip color, but... I really couldn't do that with this eye look. I feel like this eye look called for a pink lip for sure. And with that, you guys, that is it for this makeup look. I hope that you guys had fun just sitting down and playing with some things I just wanted to kind of reach for and play with. But I love this look that we came up with. I think it's perfect for a makeup play date. Maybe not the grocery store, but I would wear this on a date and certainly for a makeup play date. But that is it for today. I would love to know what makeup products you guys are enjoying right now. I would love to just know one makeup product that you just have fun using anytime you reach for it, regardless of what that is. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I so appreciate your guys' support. If you are new to my channel, if you enjoyed this video, if you have enjoyed my other videos, be sure to subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you on board. But that is it for today, you guys. I hope that you guys have a good one, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of the, oh, oh Mandy.
clumsy, clumsy fool. So when I, so with this conceal, so with this, so the, oh, Mandy, 